The birth of bluegrass music was a collective effort, with major contributions from legends like Bill Monroe, Lester Flatt, and Earl Scruggs. But another group that could not be overlooked was the Stanley Brothers. Virginians Carter and Ralph Stanley, born in rural Dickinson County in the 1920s, were early adopters of the old-time mountain music that blossomed into bluegrass in the mid-1940s. The brothers were born into a musical family. Their father, Lee Stanley, who operated the sawmill, was a fine singer, and their mother, Lucy, played the clawhammer-style banjo. Lucy taught Ralph to play the banjo with such songs as Little Birdie and Cripple Creek. Their mom was especially supportive in their desire to perform and said she hoped someday they'd be on the radio. They grew up singing hymns at church in the minor key style of the Primitive Baptist Universalist Church and the backcountry pinch throat way, a style reflected later in their performances. Writer Stephen Thomas Earlwine said of the boys, They took those mountains and their traditions and their songs and wove them into a traditional bluegrass sound of utter purity, simplicity, and astonishing beauty. I wandered again To my home in the mountains Where in youth's early dawn I was happy and free I looked for my friend But I never As teenagers, the brothers played local barn dances with a band they formed called the Lazy Ramblers. Before enlisting in the U.S. Army and serving in World War II, the brothers performed as a duo on WJHL radio in Johnson City, Tennessee. After the war, they resumed their musical careers and formed the Clinch Mountain Boys. They briefly had a regular show on the Norton, Virginia radio station before moving to Bristol, Tennessee and WCYB radio where they appeared on the popular Farm and Fun Time show. Their success was fueled by their complex harmonies, Carter on lead and Ralph on tenor, and diverse musical styles ranging from old time to bluegrass. By 1947, they recorded their first songs with the Richer Tone label, where they recorded the Rambler's Blues and Molly and Tenbrooks, among others. They later performed on WPTF in Raleigh, North Carolina, their traditional five-instrument lineup made them one of the most renowned bluegrass bands, and they often made local appearances at American Legion halls, schools, and fire stations. Their father served as a part-time manager and helped them book shows. In those days, many of their bookings came from requests for them to appear at various venues. They were so popular that sometimes they get as many as 14 requests for appearance per day. They rehearsed six days a week from 10 to noon and then performed on their radio show until 1 and then drove to do a live show, sometimes many miles away. It was a tough schedule. In 1949, the band signed with Columbia Records, which was home to many significant bluegrass musicians. The duo of Carter and Ralph was always the group's foundation. By the early 1950s, Carter established himself as a celebrated songwriter specializing in lonesome songs about loss and the potential loss of loved ones and places. These included The White Dove, Too Late to Cry, We'll Be Sweethearts in Heaven, and The Fields Have Turned Brown. Carter said his songwriting came out of necessity because of the lack of classic material they could perform on their radio show. Charlie Monroe, who was working at the same station, denied them the ability to sing Roll in My Sweet Baby's Arms claiming he owned the rights to it. Charlie even provided a long list of songs that no one at the station could sing, including Flatt and Scruggs, who had just left the Bluegrass Boys. Carter sang lead in an emotional, lonely voice that was perfect for the sad songs he wrote. Earl Wine said of him, He took a happy song and sang it sad. He took a sad song 
and sang it sadder. Ralph was a remarkable banjo player and provided tenor harmony to Carter's lead, singing in a classic backcountry style. Their signing with Columbia caused quite a dust-up in the bluegrass world as it angered Bill Monroe so much that he switched labels and signed with Decca. He had been with Columbia for quite some time. He thought the Stanley brothers were imitating his band and he saw them as economic threats. In later years, Monroe became friends with the brothers and Ralph and Carter even performed with the Bluegrass Boys in 1951. Their work with the Bluegrass Boys occurred shortly after the brothers split up for a short time. Ralph briefly played banjo with the Bluegrass Boys until he was seriously injured in an auto accident. While Ralph was recuperating, Carter played and sang with Bill Monroe. Their separation lasted less than a year, and when Ralph recovered from his injuries, the group was reformed and the Clinch Mountain Boys were back, this time recording for Mercury Records. They wrote, performed, and recorded many of their own songs. Ralph stated that this was the period when they produced their best work. Some considered the mid-50s the golden era of the band. They recorded Our Last Goodbye, Could You Love Me One More Time, and Harbor of Love while with Mercury. They also did a cover of Orange Blossom Special and many more. They recorded their first album for Mercury in 1958, Country Pickin' and Singin'. By the late 1950s, they left the Mercury label and started recording with several smaller labels, including Starday and King. They moved to Florida and began playing on the Swanee River Jamboree. It was at this time that the group was having financial problems. Their records weren't selling well, and they could no longer afford to maintain the full band, so the Clinch Mountain Boys were temporarily released. The brothers continued performing as a duo and played primarily in the South. This lack of national exposure hurt their career and is the primary reason they never rose to the level of fame of Flatten Scruggs or Bill Monroe. The group's only charted song was recorded in 1960, How Far to Little Rock, a novelty song which reached number 17 on the country charts. Carter Stanley recalled that the boys had learned the song from a carpenter, Fletcher Moss, who had helped build a house for one of their brothers. This was long before they started playing publicly and they were both still children. Hello, stranger. Hello there, stranger. Could you tell me how far it is to Little Rock? No, sir, I couldn't, buddy, but there's a devil of a big one right down here in Pap's old field. <laughs> In March of 1966, the Stanley Brothers and the reassembled Clinch Mountain Boys were part of an 18-show European tour that performed in Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Switzerland, and England. It was called the American Folk and Country Music Tour. The London stop was at the Royal Albert Hall, and the Clinch Mountain Boys were the opening act and kicked off the show with an instrumental of Wildwood Flower. The tour was a huge success and exposed the European audiences to their first live glimpse of American traditional bluegrass music. Bill Monroe would perform in Europe in June of that year, but the Stanley Brothers were first. The 18-night European tour only had one rest day, and it was rough on all the performers. Life on the road for any musician is tough, and some turn to alcohol and drugs to relieve the boredom and stress. This apparently happened to Carter Stanley, as he became a chronic alcoholic and sadly died from cirrhosis of the liver in December 1966. He was only 41 years old. After Carter's passing, Ralph reformed the Clinch Mountain Boys with a new and often changing lineup, including new lead singer Roy Lee Centers. Others who performed with the band included Ricky Skaggs, Larry Sparks, and George Shuffler, who played with the brothers so long he was considered a third Stanley brother. They were joined by Ralph II, his son Nathan, and a young Keith Whitley. It makes no difference for I wonder No matter what I say or do I can't out there this memory of you 
And I'll cry, dear, when I think of you Somehow you wouldn't let me love you The friend we made have grown a strand hey, Instead of being blue and lonely I just think I'll go away In 1976, Ralph Stanley received an honorary doctorate of music from Lincoln University in Tennessee, and later a second doctorate from Yale University in 2014. Ralph started a bluegrass festival in honor of his brother in 1970. The festival is still held annually at the old Stanley home place in McClure, Virginia. The name has been updated with the times and is now called the Hills of Home Festival, and it honors the late Dr. Ralph Stanley. His son, Ralph II, is the festival director. A highlight in Ralph's career came with his participation in the 2000 film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou?, starring George Clooney. The movie is a Depression-era retelling of the Odyssey, in which Clooney plays an escaped convict, Ulysses Everett McGill, trying to get home to his wife Penny, played by Holly Hunter. It featured many classic old-time songs, including Man of Constant Sorrows, Lonesome Valley, Angel Band, and I Am Weary. The film was met with positive reviews, and the soundtrack album, which featured O Death, earned a Grammy for Ralph for Best Male Country Vocal Performance, beating out luminaries like Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson, no less. O Brother Where Art Thou renewed America's recognition of Stanley as a living legend. As a result, he received numerous career accolades, including the National Medal of Arts in 2006. Despite being in his 80s, he continued to tour and perform at festivals and venues of all sizes. Dr. Stanley scheduled a farewell tour in 2014, but later thought the better of it and kept on touring until shortly before his death from complications of skin cancer on June 23, 2016. He was 89 years old and before his death, the oldest living member of the Grand Ole Opry. Ralph Stanley was a pioneering figure in bluegrass music who created a lasting legacy through his songs and performances. His distinctive style and mastery of the banjo earned him widespread recognition, and he went on to become one of the most influential musicians in the genre. Throughout his long and illustrious career, Stanley performed countless live shows, recorded numerous albums, and collaborated with many of the biggest names in bluegrass music. Despite facing numerous challenges and obstacles, Stanley remained dedicated to his craft and left behind a rich legacy of music that continues to inspire and entertain audiences to this day. He will always be remembered as a true icon of bluegrass music and an inspiration to generations of musicians to come. How you treating me? You're blinding my eyes so I can't see. And you're stripping my limbs and making me cold, taking my body from my soul. 